What's up, long players? Welcome to the Long Play Listening Party, the show where we go deep on local music, writing, recording, inspiration, gear, whatever else sounds good to us. I'm Howie Howard from Mr. Furious Records. We've got Royce Diamond on the call tonight. Royce, how are you? I am doing excellent. Great Thank to you. hear. Nate Holt, how you feeling? I'm also doing excellent. Dual excellence. Uh, how you doing, Howie? How are you? I'm yes. good. Yeah, that's. I don't know if we ever asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> it never occurred to me that that anyone would ask that, but I appreciate it. I'm good. I'm gonna go with good. I'm not quite excellent, but uh, I'm, gonna go with, I'm gonna go with good. I'm, I might have been a little ex- exaggerating, but <laughs> but You're I'm not. Uh, not me. I'm excellent. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the full spectrum covered here. Uh, we're just hanging out tonight, doing an episode of When the Mics Are Off. And uh, to get us started, we've got a question from our friend Till Willis uh, that came in on Twitter. He said, some songs sound better at a certain time of day. Do we have a favorite morning or a favorite evening song? He likes Captain Beefheart in the morning, Dust Blows Forward. And at night, he likes Brian Eno, By This River. And uh, Nate, you were getting ready to uh, to drop something on us. So, do you have a favorite uh, morning it? or a favorite evening yeah. song? Um, mm, that can change. Like that, that can change daily. Um, what I was about to say was, yeah, I saw it till uh, you know tweet that out to you or yeah to um, and so I was like, well, I have a, a little bit of time to look and. I looked and I, <laughs> I have like I was like oh yeah there's you know there's a whole bunch of songs so I you know to pick one I don't know um, I was gonna say that I was narrowing it down to like something that made you like pumped you up and then something that relaxed you which is not uh, <laughs> that's not like a revelation or anything but um, man I don't know I I. I some of these songs can work, you know, both ways, depending on how you want to feel. Um, I'm going to think about it a little bit. <laughs> uh, Howard, do you have a, did you have a, anything in mind in like specifically I, in terms of yours? Yeah. So I'm going to give the long answer and then the short answer. Mm-hmm. So, My long answer is when I get out of bed, it's not that long. When I get out of bed in the morning, by the time I hit the bathroom, you know, first stop, I, most mornings I hear something in my head, uh, something of not original, you know, but some, some recording that I like or something that I heard recently or, um, and so I, make a point to try and listen to that as the, whatever's in my mind first thing in the morning, I try and actually listen to it. And I feel like that uh, is almost, I don't mean this, but it's like, it's kind of magical. Like it sets my day off on the right. Like I'm in tune with the universe. If I've got something in my head and I am able to listen to it, I really enjoy that. Um, but it could be anything. It can be soft. It could be loud. It could be new. It could be old. Uh, and then the short answer is this is sort of obvious, but, uh, one that will get stuck in my head. And when it gets stuck, I'll hit it like every other day for a couple of weeks is, uh, gotta get up by Harry Nilsson, which mm. is explicitly a morning song. Uh, but it's a great song. And, you know, once once I'm thinking about it, it'll it'll rattle around in the brain for a while. Hmm. Yeah, so you, I was. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say for me, um, I have one specific morning song that I listen to pretty regularly, uh, like every day, and it's K Flay that FML like fuck my life. Um, because when I started doing those songwriting courses, I get up at like four in the morning or whatever. Like, it just always sucked to get out of bed for a while. But then after I did, I really enjoyed it. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what the song's all about, where she's just like, 
you know, she's living her life. It's extreme. It's fun. It's all these different things. But when you got to get up early, it's not so fun. So that's mine. Mine is a very specific song. And that's actually my alarm. That's what I wake up to every day. And how long has that been going on? Oh, at least five, six years. Wow. Yeah. I also use it when um, I'm in the studio and I know I need to be somewhere. Because <laughs> the first lyric is, I need to stop. <laughs> so I'm telling myself, quit. You got to get out of here. Don't tweak that knob. Go. <laughs> You're going to have regrets if you don't. Well, I hope we I hope we answered Till's question. Yeah, and and I have a I had a specific specific song that I was listening to earlier that depending on the morning, right? Uh uh this would be like maybe a summer weekend morning or something, but Animal Collective uh Brother Sport like that song just makes me happy. Hmm. That gives me an idea uh, maybe for another another night, but um, I have a short list. So I still I still keep my music library in iTunes, and I have a short list of five star songs. Like I'm very I'm very careful with what I put five stars on. <laughs> and uh, so I'd be curious to to ask you guys like what are a few five star songs for you and that isn't you don't have to be literally five in itunes but you know some some songs that just like you said nate just like make you happy no matter what you can go to them and they'll deliver every time that would be interesting i don't have mine on the tip of my, i mean i could think of a couple uh um, well I, I i can give you one here um and let me okay i always have to kind of put stuff on Get your playlist open. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, <laughs> man, I, you know these fuck questions on the spot. Like I just, I just can't think of stuff. Else. We can save it, man. You don't have to answer, because I I cannot no. do mine on the spot. I want to go and and dig deep. Well, on it, it. I, I I I I well, since it's it was on my mind today, and I know that when I listen to it, I like it. Um, it's a Toki Monster song, and it's uh, off of a, the Lune Rouge. It was, um, I think that's how you pronounce it. It was a remix record. Um, and it was a remix of uh, We Love, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I can give you specifics in a second. But <laughs> we can move on, on on this one. Cool. Well, shall we talk about Royce? I know you wanted to talk about I think this is a great question. You wanted to talk about when you're recording, when you're producing, engineering. Or the artists. Yeah, or the artists. How do you keep, you know, how do you keep the vibe going in the studio? How do you keep the product, how do you keep the session productive and, and positive and both, you know, there's a, there's a technical task to kind of accomplish, right? And an artistic task. And also, I mean, you want people to feel good. You could you could do great right. art and capture it really well, and if people aren't feeling good, then that's not a really a fun session. So, yeah, and and um, tackling all of the challenges on the way, like you said, on the technical or the creative aspects, without it uh, becoming first of all, like what what do you like your mood to be, and then how do you stay in it? You know what I mean. So like, I would ask you, Howie, when you're, when you're, let's say you're running a session, um, how do you like that to go? You know, I'm me and Nate are coming in. He's bringing his keyboard. I'm going to come in and rap. We've got some, some stems we're going to bring you. What's that going to look like? That would be really interesting because, uh, when I've engineered or recorded, uh, lately, I mean, for the last decade or so, pretty much, I'm basically working with one person at a time. Uh, so I haven't worked with a group in a long time. Um, and I, you know, when I was younger, I, I focused more about the engineering almost to a fault, right? And I would get really 
wrapped up in um, trying to do the best job I could myself as an engineer and kind of maybe lose track of what the artist was going through. Um, and the more I work, the more the performance is everything to me. And the performance, different artists need different things to deliver that performance. So some people need to be pushed a little bit and encouraged and, um, well, I, I can be specific, right? So like my friend, Corey, you guys know Corey from an earlier show. Uh, Corey, Corey's tendency, I don't think I'm, I'm telling on him too much to say this. Corey's tendency is to, uh, accept an early take like too soon, right? Like, and not push himself to deliver a better take. So I know with Corey, I've got to ride this line of, I need to get him to do more takes than he wants to do, <laughs> but it has to be fun. I hear you. And if he, if he loses, if he's not having fun, the performance will never come no matter how many takes there are. So we have to, we have to take breaks, you know, and we have to have snacks <laughs> and he can't he can't go for a long t- a stretch i got you so we got to do short bursts um but it works he's great and if i can keep him happy you know he'll he'll happily do some extra takes for me um it's scott funny. on the oh, other man. hand is uh he wants to do too many takes almost and so, I mean, for the for the V for Voice record we did, there was a there was a sax solo. I edited. There were over sixty takes in the sax solo that I edited down to wow. what you hear. Dang. And that's it's it's <laughs> tough. That's, that's... It's tough because sometimes take fifty eight is the one we needed. <laughs> so it's he's not wrong, but it's almost the opposite kind of kind of thing you're you're gonna say something royce i want to see that session <laughs> uh, <laughs> I what i was gonna say <laughs> is um you know i i feel like even though you, you, we're talking about specific people that's just kind of what i've noticed as the engineer is the role you know just seeing you know getting to know everybody and what they need and uh why they need it from you you know what i mean Cause yeah. we're all in the room together for a reason. Um, and man, I learned like those breaks matter. You take those breaks, like, you know, we'll go up to the roof or something like that and just chill out. And it's like, all of a sudden gold just starts oozing out of everybody. <laughs> it's like the pressure is off, I guess. I don't know what it is, but it works. You jump in, you kind of hammer it a little bit, uh, till you get to a point where it's not getting better. And then you take a break. Yeah. yeah, that's at least that's how um, I'm I'm used to doing it. I think it's almost like a two step when I think about getting to know artists and even, you know, my friends who I know really well as friends. I don't really know them as artists until maybe I'm recording them. Right. I think the first step for me is listening and that never goes away. You're always listening, always you know, watching and paying attention to how someone's feeling and trying to pick up, um, pick up on what they're feeling. And then, and this is a lot tougher, but like trying to figure out what they need. Yeah. And sometimes it's a push. Sometimes it's a challenge. Sometimes it's encouragement. Sometimes it's a break, you know, uh, it could be almost anything. I feel like I have to quickly get to the point where like I can see the song in my head, you know what I mean? So then it's like, even though I don't always know what I want, I know it doesn't work. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like right away. Um, And that, that took years like to kind of develop like, and and one of the things I like to do that that really helps me is just like, don't look at the artist at all. Just like listen to what's coming out of the speakers and get in that world. You know what I mean? For sure. I actually, I make a point and maybe some people would like it differently, but I, I don't, I close my eyes when the performance is happening. 
I turn away usually, um, but I close my eyes and I make a real effort to nod my head or do something that's silent, but that will will put a good vibe out into the room. It's like it's almost goes back to what we were saying the other time about the scene and like it takes everybody to make the scene. Like I try really hard to not just be like a rock in the middle of the room or <laughs> like not be invisible. Okay, I, I'm recording. Go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I try and be it. I, I, you know, you got to be quiet and you don't want to like I'm not trying to like cheerlead people necessarily, but I'm trying to put out into the room that I'm into the music, you know, I'm feeling something and no one's ever said anything about that. So it's all like subconscious maybe, but no, that know. stuff matters, man. Uh, you know, I was going to say, uh, just kind of what you both have been talking about. Uh, I, I personally have not, engineered anything like externally with 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 clients or anything like that um you know worse and i work together um you know in person but i have like just recently when uh we recorded Corey phillips um record that's coming out in um in a few weeks with rob rubeck at Corey's house he kind of uh you know kind of Turn it into a little studio um, over a weekend, and the band cut, um, you know, all the tracks live, this rhythm, and then um, came back for overdubs and stuff. But Rob engineered everything, and um, you know, he was totally like that, just um, you know, kind of laid back, relaxed. Um, you know, he was very. Uh, he knew when to kind of push. Like he's like, "Oh man, you can you can do another. Why don't you do another take?" Uh, oh, and and then he'd be like, "No, that's great, man." And you would you would think uh, I need to do another one. He's like, "No, man, we got what we need. Like, well, yeah. I've I've got I've got what I need." And um, kind of knew how to keep things moving, and so, and that's, yeah. I mean, I think it it turned out, you know, sounding like you know, we all had a good time, but and then there were definitely times when it got tense, and you know, there, were, you know, maybe it was after you know several hours of recording and it was, you know, time was kind of a crunch and, and people were kind of, you know, ah, whatever, you know, but, <laughs> but it, it, I mean, things get that way. And, um, yeah. you know, there's nothing personal. It's just, you know, uh, nervous get afraid and you just that that's, that's when you, that's when you break and that's when you, you just, you know, Hey, let's, you need to come back to this after whatever interval of time, you know, is, passes so nate you may not have um engineered yet but you have you've been in a lot of sessions with a lot of different musicians and i wonder you know what have you are there any themes or like what have you observed or or have you developed preferences how you like to work when you're in a group um it's man i don't know it's um generally you know the obviously with with fans you you would hope there's a a good vibe between you know the group itself um but that's important you know um that you're all kind of on the same page in terms of you know being able to have fun and and, and but know what you're doing and 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 not have to you know uh go back and revisit things just because, you know, someone wasn't, you know, whatever, hadn't learned the song or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I'm just thinking back over, um, you know, uh, Maria, the Mexican, uh, we went up to Omaha a couple, uh, I think it, oh, it might've been three years ago now. Um, to ARC, which is a really nice studio, um, and, and, and we tracked, uh, I think, two songs, one or two songs live, and that was just, I mean, we knew the songs we came in, um, you know, the engineer was super chill, um, you know, we had uh, down what we wanted to do, what we needed to do, uh, everybody was prepared, and, and 
you know, it, the whole uh, experience was great. Um, it, so I, I've been pretty lucky, I think, um, to be able to play with really talented people and, and, and have really cool experiences like that. So um, I know that's probably, you know, there's a lot of bad experiences out there, but I, I don't, I can't remember a, a particularly bad one. I might be able, it might, something might pop up <laughs> um, <laughs> as, as we're talking, but like, yeah, it's, it's generally always been a really fun time um, going to, into a studio, whether it's a, you know, a paid thing or, or, or you know, someone, someone's buddy has it or sets it up. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had a bad time in the studio. Um, definitely, you know, had better days or, or something like that. But, you know, you watch videos or, or movies about bands in the studio and the fights they get into and stuff. I never had any of that kind of um, turmoil or anything. You know, mostly what I've seen, like if something doesn't go right, it's like maybe you mentioned something about a performance or a piece of the music that somebody else was like really, really married to and, you know, they just get quiet. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And some of that is, I mean, yeah, I guess you manage your egos, um, obviously, but uh, that's where you hopefully you have a good vibe in between everybody that you are you know, working with so that you know there's no there's no per nothing personal you know taken as much right, as, right. as possible that that you're all kind of um striving you know or aiming to for a, a shared goal you know show uh, yeah. you know, to you know to make things you know as good as possible so it's not like Puffy's gonna shut down the studio, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Royce, uh, do you ever ask artists when they come in, like for the first time, how they like to work or what they need from you, or I mean, just have like an out loud conversation about that? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it's tricky. Like some people want you to. It, it used to be another role, but just like kind of produce the session. You know what I mean? And other people kind of have an idea of exactly what they want, you know? So I just kind of fill out the conversation. You know, if I have somebody that's like, oh, I've never been in the studio before or something like that, I'm, you know, I'll lay out like, well, here's what works for me. Um, well, here are the technical things that work for me as an engineer. And then here are the things that work for me as an artist when, when I'm going into the studio or what I would like when I go into the studio. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I kind of let, I like to let the artist vibe, breathe and find a space in it. You know what I mean? It help. Mm -hmm. I feel like it helps me mm -hmm. understand the music more. Cause like there's been times when I've been in the studio and somebody's like singing their heart out or rapping their heart out and on the other side of the glass. And I'm like, man, this is garbage. Like what is happening? Uh, this dude is so excited. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like a light comes on. And I can kind of see their perspective and it gives me a totally different take. And then I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. This is what we need to do. You know what I'm saying? And I can start having that conversation. And kind of like you said, that's where that energy, uh, when my energy turns up, then it's like everything starts to kind of come together. You know, you, you're validating the idea that somebody's labored over before they even got to you. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how I approach it. And then, like I said, other people are like, I already know exactly how I want my reverbs. I got them all figured out down to the millisecond. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of thing. And it's like, all right, then I'm going to be your hands and do what you want me to do. You know, mm -hmm. and, I'll, and I'll throw you some ideas and options. Uh, but that's how I kind of approach it. And, and more because like, you know, when you're paying by the hour, you just don't really want to take the extra time it takes to vibe out for three days you know what i mean right. it's like we need to kind of get to the go pretty quickly um in order for you to have any kind of value out of this you know yeah so 
Yeah, I hope did I answer your question? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, I was just thinking while you're talking, I was thinking uh, my my own recording process for myself has gotten so interwoven with Reaper and the way that takes, you know, get edited and stuff. I think I would find it really hard for someone else to record me now. Cause I know, you know, I know what, and I'm keeping track. Okay. Take eight. I like this part, you know? So even as I'm tracking and at first that was hard, right. To do both things, to be the artist and record myself. But now it's, it's so much the same thing. Um, it would be a real, I'll say it'll be a real adjustment for someone That's else to record. I feel like I've, I've, I've taken the opposite journey. Like when I was first recording myself as an artist, I had no idea what I wanted to sound like, you know what I mean? So I labored over all the details and now, um, man, I, anybody that wants to come in there and push that button for me, <laughs> like, I just would like to, to not have to think about any of that stuff. Yeah. When I'm on the other side of the mic, but you know, I'm in there, I've got my iPad, I've got my iPhone and I'm trying to like run everything and get, get the perfect take. Um, which is fun. It's cool that we can do it. I used to have to run 10 feet, you know what I mean? Right. And be ready, have a 30 second breath already before <laughs> I get in front of the mic. <laughs> You know, you know how long your pre-roll's got to be to get your... Exactly. <laughs> I got it down to 10 seconds downtown. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Um, man, I would love it. I would love to just be an artist um, for a while and experience that um, fully. I think it would be really, really freeing. Because I know, like, when I work with Nate, like, on this last one that we did... You know, they're they're my lyrics, but once he gets them and he okays them, like I don't ever even have to think about them again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, no, that's yours. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you like it, I love it, you know? It is it is really nice to I love having different projects where I have different roles and, and have different boundaries and, and can do exactly that and just like not have to worry about certain aspects of the projects. Um that becomes really fun and freeing. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm really enjoying it, to tell you the truth. I really, really am. Like, in a way that I don't think I, I mean, I've always been, like, even when we were young and we were recording, I was the guy that was like recording from tape to tape. You know what I'm saying? It's just <laughs> like, hold on, hold on, do it again one more time. <laughs> I got you right here. And go, go. <laughs> <laughs> But cool. Did we cover that one? Any other thoughts on uh studio vibes? I I have I I do remember a a particularly uh not positive <laughs> studio experience. If you want here, I won't. Yeah, yeah. If you name, can name names or anything. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was my college band. We were a good, you know, a, a decent band. We were like a funk and soul band, pretty fun. I mean, and, and people were, you know, legit talented and have gone on to, to you know, teach and, and, and make their living um, different ways with music. But yeah, it was um, yeah, back in college. Uh, it was a studio downtown. Um, overall, the, the studio was, I think, in, well, in my, my view of it, it was, it was a, a, a nice place and, and, you know the the owner was cool and everything, but the particular engineer, I think he uh, he was, uh, I think a cool guy, and I or I thought of him as a cool guy. I think you know the circumstances maybe, um, maybe we weren't, maybe we did, we're just, I mean we we knew what we were doing when I mean, we had songs and we were recording and uh, you know playing the songs through and stuff, but it was like pulling teeth to have, like want to go back and do overdubs like you would expect <laughs> you to. Um, <laughs> You know, we, we would do the song ones, and he's like, okay, uh, is there another song? I was like, what, uh, <laughs> are you serious right now? Um, and, and, you know, and it could have, you know, I'm sh it, it had to have been something that was going on in his life or something, or maybe, you know, he just didn't like us. Um, that could have been it, but it was just, you know, it was just like have, having like a cranky, just some cranky, like, dad or something that you know you're just like <laughs> taking him away from his 
Oh, from, shit. <laughs> <laughs> from the fucking, you know, basketball game or something. Like, <laughs> like well, I got to mess with you right now, man. Come on. <laughs> it's like, what, what? I thought that's what we're here paying for. But. Yeah, n- nothing like paying somebody to end up feeling like you're wasting their time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No doubt. Yeah, it was like... <laughs> <laughs> but, oh man well i haven't had i can't think of any real bad experiences i've had i've certainly had experiences that were frustrating at the time but it was because of my own limitations you know the stuff i wanted to do that i just couldn't quite figure out how to do or you know artistic uh Conflicts. Conflict isn't necessarily a bad word, right? It's all in how you handle it. And so I've been in in recording situations where there was conflict that wasn't comfortable, but it was productive and and sir, you know, everyone. There was no question that everyone was interested in the music, right? And there's different visions, maybe, but but everyone ultimately cared about the music and was trying to achieve the the best result the way they saw it. So. I don't have any disaster stories. <laughs> <laughs> no, the biggest disasters are like the hard drives of songs that aren't finished. You know mm. what I mean? It's like, whatever happened to that song we were working on? <laughs> Forgot all about that one because we did 10 more. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about that the other day. I was like, I've got a backup of a backup. And then I've got a, another one that I just plug in from time to time that backs up. All the backups. <laughs> Worries has this figured out. I think you said yeah. you had like a gray or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's kind of, um, it's going to be a while before I can get into that. But man, that's, just that's, the way, that's the way to go. Hard drives are cheap and you can get that, uh, what is it? Carbon copy cloner. Mm. That shit yeah, email right. you when it backs up so you can wake up in the morning knowing that all your files are safe. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I've got four days a week and I, I turn on the computer and I've got that notification like uh, backup success. It's a good day. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's a beautiful day good. in the neighborhood. Even you know? if it's like zero, you know, zero. You right. It's like, well, thank you for checking. No doubt. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. I remember, man, starting off with like a I had this, oh my God, I had this, I have it. I still use it. Um, I have a Roland MC505, right? And it uses uh, flashcards and like a special, they don't even make these fucking things anymore. So it's like expensive to get them on like eBay or whatever, you know? But these cards were like four gigs in the 90s, okay? So you plug it in the back, you could back up like, I think it's 200 uh, drum patterns that you've created or whatever. And I create like little songs and all these different elements off of this thing. So I made my very first record ever, man. And I went to back everything up and hit the delete button. The way this thing works is like all the lights come on when you hit the button and as it's deleting your data, the lights go out. So you get to watch (laughs) all your shit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and you can't turn it off because it'll ruin the box. You know what I mean? So you literally have to watch it, man. And you I lost watched, your record? The entire album. Oh. The very first record I even, like, you know, I spent six months putting this thing together. Very first thing I'd ever done. And, uh, man, I watched that shit turn off or erase all of my data. I turned it off when it was done. I went and got into bed into the fetal position. And I just laid there. I was like, oh, my God, my world is over. And the next morning, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to redo it. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I that's, have that's experienced. That's terrible. That would be a terrible lo- feeling. <laughs> it was bad, man. It was really, really bad. Lose your box or lose yeah. your audio. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. So. But I still had a box. Still had a box have some of the first beats i ever sold on that box you know? people uh people like the 505 i mean man, that, it's badass yeah you know what's annoying is that i like I still have sessions that i mean I, I know they're a little old but i pull them up and it can't find you know the the, the files the samples and uh, you are you know, talking about out. pro 2 sessions uh n- 
mainly this is Ableton, because that's oh, okay. you know, mainly what I've been working with, and I and you know it's probably user error. I mean, I'm I'm sure it's user error that you know at some point I got rid of a drive that had stuff on it that I didn't know, or you know the other possibility I guess is that I had a bad drive that I had to replace, and and I think maybe copying that and backing it up didn't. There are just bad sectors on the drive. I think not that I am a, a that and all that knowledgeable, but you know, doing the research that was what was the possibility that this drive has bad sectors and it's not backing up and it's not copying and whatever files are in those sectors you're gonna lose. And I think that's probably what happened with some of that stuff. But it's that's I'm just like, man, what was that? <laughs> I really want to know what that was. And then you gotta <laughs> debate, like, am I gonna delete this or am I just gonna leave it there to come back to every Two months Man, and like some, realize there's somebody's going to create something that one day is going to open up all of our old sessions because I've got sessions from like 2005 that now are just like little black folders mm -hmm. on the Mac. You know what I'm saying? Because it just won't even recognize or open them. I've got to have like an old Mac to get to them or whatever. But I'm not going to throw them away. I'm sure it's like tons of great, terrible music in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jarrett sent me, um, uh, Pro Tools files from like 2005 or six, somewhere around there. Um, you know, that we were both like, you know, it's crazy that this stuff will still open because he was, he was having, he was probably having problems getting the stems bounced down. And so, he, uh, he sent it to me and I finally got it figured out and worked. But yeah, the, the, the session itself was so old and it's just, you know, because he, I, he just recently found the drive, so it's kind of like, you know, open up like something you've lost for a years. decade. Like, like, wow, <laughs> I can't believe this stuff is still here. But then and then it opens up and you're like, this is crazy. Well, and some of my old ones do just fine. I mean, they're right next to the ones that don't, you know, on the drive. I don't know. Maybe it was some setting that I missed or hit or whatever, but some of them open up just fine. I can open them up and I'll save them off to whatever later version I have at the time. So theoretically it works. Hmm. You know? Yeah, I don't know what that is. But that's also informed the way that I store my music. You know what I mean? Right. That's why I always have stems of everything in a separate place. It's just a WAV file. I don't need to get into any kind of crazy stuff and bounces of everything you know like a two track what's mix o2 who cares you know what i mean like it's there it's available i can see the process like all that kind of stuff because i hate it i hate it if you lose i mean just like one file could ruin a whole session mm -hmm. we've got uh 20 minutes or so uh we don't have to spend it all on this but uh should we change gears a little bit Okay. So, uh, I uh, real quick. Yeah. Um, I think there wasn't there a second part. Till's question was the evening. So should oh, we sure. kind of do some stuff now and then maybe get back to that? I just don't want to. I I don't want to not address that part of it because yeah, that was. I think well, I can address it quickly. I don't have anything for the evening. My di my listening just from my morning album. It just meanders throughout the day, kind of wherever. And if I, you know, if I'm not sure where to go next, I've got a, I'll look at something new, you know, that I've downloaded recently, or I've got a list of like listening projects, you know, of like, you know, I'll be going through Depeche Mode's discography in order, right? And so be like, where am I in that? And I'll just pull up, you know, music for the masses or whatever. And that'll, you know, that'll take six months or a year to get through it, but you know, it keeps me, keeps me moving. So it gives me, I never, I, I always have, I've 10 times as many things I want to listen to as I have time in the day. So I'm never lacking for something to listen to. Yeah. I do little projects like that. Um, I'm always looking for, I don't know, motivation to go and listen to something new or different. Um, lately it's been Lionel Richie because I was having a conversation with my mom. She was telling me that that was one of my grandmother's favorite artists. Okay. So I just started listening to his whole catalog of music and just like, you know, 
Like, uh, grandma, you a freak? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Big catalog. But you know, just just listening to. Uh, I mean, I do things like that on a on a regular basis. Uh, you know, a few years ago, well, and it was a morning thing. So maybe this will add to the to the morning. Um, I always made when my son was here. Uh, it was okay then. Apparently, it's not now. But when my son was here, I always made breakfast every morning for the family. Um, and I always had like every quarter, I would have some specific style of music. You know, depending on what it was, and you know whether it was big band and. Or, uh, you know, family songs or the 70s or my childhood. I always had like some kind of theme that mm -hmm. we would do for a quarter just to introduce everybody to music, go back and like listen to music. Now that I'm older, you know what I mean? Stuff yeah. like that. Um, so I used to do that all, I mean, for a good six to eight years. So. What do you do for discovery? Where do you find new, new stuff? Mm -hmm. So I felt really, really lost when everything became digital and um, going to record stores seemed to be like, you know, it was, a, it was a, not a chore, but I don't have a lot of record stores around me. So it was always like I had to go out of my way. I couldn't, couldn't like stop on my way home from work. So I started using like, you know, like themes and ideas to search for music. Uh, like I said, with like with my mom. So. You know, I just, we just went to Spotify, pull up all of his music, and then, you know, you can go from there to YouTube and see all of his interviews and, you know, like, just, like, really get to know the music. That's kind of how I do it. Just, like, what what content can I grab that can fill in some holes or tell a better story or something like that? Mm -hmm. That's the only way I can remember stuff is if I can make it like a movie, you know? I was like, oh, he was doing this when his wife left him. Oh, that makes sense. You know what uh -huh. I mean? <laughs> Nate, did you want to talk about your evening song or? Oh, oh, yeah. I, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, uh, I just, there's forever, like even like from high school to college, I like Soma by the Smashing Pumpkins. Mm. I'd always put that on at night, like in headphones. And it was just like, I don't know. It was just like transporting you somewhere yeah and fade into you by Matthew star is a nice evening song as well well till that gives you uh that gives you some variety something to check out uh both morning and evening there you go all right well let's uh let's dig into this for for a minute get a little bit technical uh here's the situation You've got a, a stereo instrumental to mix with a, we'll say a mono vocal. Could be a stereo vocal, whatever. But you've got an instrumental two track and a vocal. How are you going to mix those together for the best, you know, effect? Or what are some ideas to get you going? And that's my situation. So I'm pulling stuff off my 404, which is a new, you know, instrument for me. And it's kind of, it's hip hop. And so I'm mixing rap for the first time. I've never mixed rap before. So that's kind of the specific situation, but I'm guessing whatever approach you guys might use would also apply to other genres. If, if you're in this kind of stereo instrumental with a, with a vocal situation. So how would you, Royce, how would you approach you got a two track instrumental and a vocal to mix? And then I have I uh, kind of keep keeping with this. I th I think I have a like a specific question about a specific plugin and process for your voice. So. Oh okay. Um. So, what I'll do is I'll recall some of those two track mixes that I did that were kind of tough to do. Um, I had a two track mix that was really, really, uh, low end heavy, um, and probably maybe six to eight, uh, vocals, mono vocals that I was mixing with it. So, uh, the first thing that I did was I just kind of, 
I tried to see what I needed in the low end and how much of it I could get isolated. If I can get that isolated, uh, sky's the limit with like mids and highs is kind of how I, I approached it. And then um, I, I, I pulled off most of the top end and then wound up rolling off a little of the low end. Uh, and then I mixed the vocals over that and then brought in the other higher frequencies to fit around the vocals. Um, it mm -hmm. wasn't perfect, but it it made the music feel like it was all in one place and not like these two separate things, especially, you know, you've got multiple vocals. Um, there's a whole lot of width to that that you're not going to get out of a, a two track mix no matter what. So that's how I did um, a really low end one. Now, one that I have is kind of like um, more like punk where there's not a whole lot of low end. Uh, that was a lot more challenging I found. Um, but then I just tried to EQ some space for the vocals out of the music, which unfortunately the music's going to, suffer a little bit you know especially if you have like a stagnant eq mm -hmm. um but and then force the vocals to just be in that space you know so you're losing a little bit on both ends to do it so you do a complimentary yeah so whatever i'm i'm you know just like it's a pie you know like whatever i'm cutting out of the music i'm just gonna sit the vocal right there so mm -hmm. it's less apparent that <laughs> no, that snare is not hitting like it should be. <laughs> you right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but th those are the two ways that I approach it. And I mean, EQ, it, to me, is your friend. Um, subtractive EQ is your friend. I if you just look at your situation, no matter what it is, and be like, what can I get rid of mm -hmm. that will make this easier? At least that's how I always approached it. I'm sure that somebody else would different idea but there you go i'm with you on the subtractive eq i'm a huge subtractive eq person that's well, always that's always my go-to yeah um you know some of kind of a tip around that that i've noticed a lot you know is is pretty common is is saying you know try to find out what part of the instrument or or vocal or whatever is is just the the sweet spot or or the one or, or the part that that is most needed in the context of the song and then mm. you can lose like you know maybe you solo it and it sounds doesn't sound like like you'd want it to but in the context of the mix you're getting the important part of it um heard and and losing everything else so that you have that, that and, space and now that you say that um on the one that was the hip hop low end track, um, I had to automate that low end at certain points in the song, that low end EQ at certain points in the song to make it feel like natural all the way through. So I did forget about that. It was interesting because I did, I did the lows and then I tried to do just mids and then just highs. And that didn't, in that particular situation, didn't like really pan out for me. I started running into like, phasing and, and you know all these kind of weird artifacts it just didn't sound natural at that point but it was like it was bad i mean i told them when they brought it i was like man this is gonna be so bad when i give it to you because it was like a mp3 and you know, mm -hmm. had a whole bunch of low end and stuff and i was like man what are you doing with this yeah. <laughs> what are you doing well i tried so what i've uh I've only done a rough mix so far, but what I did was uh, I did I set up a, a multi-band compressor on the instrumental track. Okay. And set the uh, th so three bands. Set the frequencies, like the the crossover frequencies, around kind of where the whole vocal sat. So I didn't EQ the vocal. 
it's it was a finished vocal like a produce this is a remix so the vocal was like produced and it has delay on it and and is pretty much finished so the crossovers are at like uh, they were wider than i expected it was like i don't 200 and 8k or something like that so a really wide mid band mm. and then i sent uh the vocal to the multi band compressor and only set up compression in the mid band. So the, the lows and highs and the instrumental are, are always there and, and never get any compression. And then the mid band gets ducked a DB, maybe two. Um, when the vocal comes in, I said a really, you know, really gentle knee to the compressor. Um, so that was just kind of, it's a, it's a draft. It's not finished by any means. And, um, but that was starting to kind of make them feel like they belong together versus the vocal just laying on top of the instrumental. And I think, you know, maybe there's a little saturation on the whole thing to, to, I was going to ask about a little that more. Too, yeah. Um, I don't know if you use the, the waves F six, Nate turned me on to it, but <laughs> it's a multi-band EQ, right? Uh, dynamic EQ mm -hmm. and um, today if I was going to do that I would use that EQ because what I would do is I would take you know whatever is the the most dominant uh, vocal and I would send it to a side chain and I would put that EQ onto the instrumental mm -hmm. and have it just duck enough to feel natural uh with the beat yeah wherever that frequency i mean and you could do a range of frequencies with it and it's pretty slick i mean you can adjust you know every aspect of it the threshold the 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 range of the the duck the attack and release of it and get something that sounds really really natural um i would do that today as opposed to what i did you know i don't know how long ago that was but yeah, yeah that's a good that, idea i don't have that one but i've got the uh tdr nova dynamic eq okay. uh which is free if anyone's listening uh there's a there's a totally optional upgrade you know but the the basic one is free um and uh so i could do it with that yeah and and just see what you get um uh, that'll be that'll be cool because it'll be driven by the music yeah so no matter what it's going to feel more natural i'm trying to see if this there there's a free eq by voxango called gliss eq i don't think it's dynamic but it's neat anyway um and we can keep talking I'm, I'm yeah well i wanted to <laughs> nate you had a question uh like a plug-in question or something oh sure sure well um and it's it's kind of getting away from the two track specific uh, thing no but, that's that's good go for uh, it you know Royce, you talked a little bit how you do, do a little uh dynamic eq you know with side chain um on the vocals but and when we we had a session of the day and you were using um vocal writer and i know kind of what the concept is but i, I you know i don't write a lot of stuff with vocals already in it so i have i don't mi have it mixed a lot of vocals necessarily um, and so I wanted to see exactly, and I can, I'll just read the manual, but just how you use it, um, and, and, and how you approach that. So the vocal writer is essentially a compressor, um, a dynamic compressor, if you think about it, that treats the audio signal um as opposed to interacting with it right so i can sit there and move my fader up and down that's how we used to do it right on a, on a console mm -hmm. to get right. the the perfect like level that i want you know keep the vocal right in the in the pocket where i want it consistently for a long period of time without changing the sonic character of the vocal so that's when i like to use it um you know, sometimes you, you want it to feel 
uh, especially like in, in electronic music, you want it to feel more like it's compressed or whatever. But I just really enjoy the sound of a natural vocal. I just would like it to sit in one place. And that'll do all of the writing for me. You can even store the automation if you want, which just seems way too technical and time consuming, but you could. Um, so I like to do that. And then the, the, what it can do, what you can do is it takes your dynamic range and you say, this is where I want it to sit in the mix. And I set a ceiling where I want it to sit in the mix. So the only way that it can fluctuate is if it goes down. So it always comes back up to this spot and that's the top spot of it. And if it's got to adjust everything down for it to be the top spot, it'll do it so that I can hear the nuances of your vocal. If I want to send that to a compressor, you know what I mean? And get kind of like the space texture around it. So that's how I kind of use the vocal rider. And, and it's not a, it doesn't always work. Sometimes on the vocal, it, it changes the sound a little bit. So you just have to pay attention to what it's doing. But mm -hmm. just to get the vocal to sit exactly where I want without changing the character of the vocal is what I'm using it for. Does that answer what your your question? No, I think so. But you kind of have to have uh, an idea of the song in general and how, how it goes to, to know what level you want to set it and the, yeah. the, the range you want it to, to hit. So the reason why I would grab it is, let's say like, um, you know, I have the perfect, I, I like the sound that I've put. I've got an EQ, I've got whatever I've got going on on the vocal. And um, I noticed that some spots you're jumping out at me or some spots I can't hear you. You know, it's just to mm -hmm. average that out, uh, but do it in a fader move way. So I don't always use that. You know what I mean? Like, it's not always necessary depending on the performance. Right. So, yeah, you're right. It just depends on what's going on in the song. Because, I mean, essentially you could do something like that with, with a dynamic EQ if you wanted to. You know, it's, it's kind of yeah. the same, only it would be frequency based. And, and I was wrong about the box, the the, the, the span EQ by Voxango. Um, uh, it's not free, but it's it's relatively cheap. It's like sixty bucks. But uh, they have or the Gliss EQ. I'm sorry, but but they have span, which is like a, a RTA um, uh, spectrum analyzer that's free. I mean, they have like fifteen free plugins that are yeah. Voxango has tons really of free nice. stuff. I use span yeah, all yeah, the yeah. time. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're coming up on an hour. We can keep talking, but maybe we ought to let the listeners go. Uh, if you've got questions about anything we've talked about, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Gmail, the long play LP at all those platforms. And uh, we'll be back next week with a episode I'm extremely excited about. Ghost Mind will be joining us. And uh, if you haven't heard of Ghost Mind, that's okay. We're going to introduce you to Eric's music. And it is, it's really something. It's very cool. And uh, we're psyched to have him on the show. It's been a long play listening party. Later, everybody.